Hey everyone, welcome to Storytime with the BSM. My name is Adrian, and today we'll be reading The Magic Boot, written by Remy Samard and Pierre Prep. In a little country where people were very poor, there lived a woman who was terribly discouraged. Her son Pippo had enormous feet, and they would not stop growing. Pippo's feet grew so fast that he could win a race without even moving. When Maria, Pippo's little sister, went off to work in the fields, the boy and his mother would go begging for money to buy shoes. Money for his poor feet, money for his poor feet, called his mother to the people walking by. A good fairy who happened to be in the neighborhood decided to help the boy, whose feet by now were as long as water skis. From his window next door, Roberto, green with envy, watched as the good fairy with two leaves of her magic wand made two magnificent red boots appear. He couldn't believe his eyes, his ears, or his nose. Here, Pippo, here's a pair of magic boots, said the fairy. When they get too small, just water them and they will grow. But be careful, don't water them too much. Pippo was so happy that he went off skipping in his new boots. I wish I had boots like that too, grumbled jealous Roberta who had been spying on Pippo. Without thinking of the fairy's warning, Pippo jumped in all the puddles, splish, splash, splash. But as the water licked his boots, they grew bigger and bigger and became much too large for Pippo's feet. At the last puddle, he tripped and fell and came face to face with a bunch of enormous hairy toes. Aha, finally, my dinner has arrived, roared the terrible, horrible owner of the toes. Oh, please, Mr. Ogre, don't eat me. I'm skinny and bony and really dirty. But Hector the Ogre loved to eat skinny, bony, dirty children, even if the dirt did get stuck between his teeth. He thought Pippo would make an excellent meal. Wait a minute, Mr. Ogre, I have a bargain for you, said Pippo, who was quite a little businessman. I'll give you my boots if you don't eat me. I don't need boots, the ogre roared. An ogre without boots is no ogre at all. Pippo declared, to sit down and eat barefoot is just not done. Pippo managed to convince the ogre who proudly put on his new boots. Pippo went back to his house, happy to have saved his life, but sorry to have lost his boots. The ogre also went home. Roberto, who envied everyone and everything, was there. Having overheard Pippo and the ogre, he had run as fast as he could to the ogre's house. He had to steal those boots. Roberto trembled in his hiding place behind the chest of drawers. Suddenly, he was afraid, afraid of ending up like a tiny noodle in a big tomato sauce. Night fell, and the ogre took off his boots to go to bed. As great snores rattled the window panes, Roberto slipped out of his hiding place and put on the boots. He escaped from the ogre's house with his new footwear. He ran like the wind until there was no wind left in him, crossing fields and forests and streams, which was not a good idea. As soon as the boots touched the water, they grew bigger and bigger and soon became too heavy for Roberto. He was so angry at not being able to wear them that he decided to bury them, separately in a field. If he couldn't have them, nobody else could either. Several days later, Maria, Pippo's little sister, was planting some seeds in the field. She took her watering can and watered them. Suddenly, a giant red shape grew out of the earth. Maria poured on more water and the shape grew larger. She yanked as hard as she could and pulled a boot out of the ground. It was her brother's boot. Maria decided to bring the magic boot home and give it back to Pippo. At first, Pippo was delighted to get one of his boots back, but what good was it? He could not wear it. It was much too big for him. Too big for his little country, a country where people were always stepping on his feet, a country that was too small for someone whose feet kept growing. When Maria saw how sad her brother was, she had an idea. She rolled up her little sleeves and flexed her small muscles. Then she picked up the boot and tossed it into the sea. When the boot hit the water, it started growing bigger and bigger until it became Italy. Thank you so much for joining us for this week's story time. Don't forget to like and subscribe to our channel and we'll see you next time. Bye.